Stunning in her beautiful white dress, Avery Morton blissfully stood in front, thanking the guests for coming to their engagement party. It was November 1, 2017 not really a usual date for couples to hold a party and celebrate their love. But for them, there is no better date. I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming and for sharing such a perfect evening with us. It's been so perfect that I think the only day that could possibly rival it is the one that resulted in all of us being here in the first place. And that night was exactly three years ago today. And it was on that night that I knew I had met someone really, really special. It was the night when we first met. moment, Noah Ashby, who was on the verge of tears, went back to a Halloween party in 2014 the night when he and Avery first met. The two immediately clicked, they have the same interests, they got along really well. It was a perfect night. They almost kissed. But then, he realized that he thought wrong. From the very start, he's just a friend to Avery. You know when you were about to fulfill your destiny? I waited too long, and then I got hugged. He told his good friend Max, and Avery's best friend, Carrie. Getting really drunk during the engagement party, Carrie had to drive him home, but instead of his house, he asked her to drop him off at one of the places he and Avery went after ditching the Halloween 2014 party. so nice to have a good guy friend. I can't even tell you. I left never knowing what went wrong. But I figured I would at least get a second chance with her. Until fate kicked me the very next day when she met Ethan who helped her get cereal at the grocery. And you know why she needed more cereal? Because I ate all of her cookie crisp. Like a chubby nine-year-old slob. He told them that he believes they had something that night because Avery was really happy with him and even called him cute. But Carrie, who has a tough personality, advised that he should not cling to just being called cute. Noah, relationships are all about energy and attraction and intangible things, things beyond your control. Okay, you may be a great guy, but you are never going to be that guy to Avery. I just think it's, you know, time to move on. That night, Noah went to the exact photo booth where he and Avery had fun on the night they first met. Drunk as he was, he inserted coins and took photos. If only I could have a chance to do everything differently, I could be the kind of guy she would want. I could be exactly the kind of guy Avery would end up with. And then, something unexpected happens. He woke up one morning realizing he was back on October 31st, 2014. In front of Max's building, he saw Carrie and started talking like he knows her. She found him weird. Later that night, he tried to change everything to make himself appear attractive to her, eventually planting a kiss on her lips before the night ended. But then, Carrie recognized him. This is the psycho I was telling you about. The one who knew me, said he was at our house, claimed to be some sort of time-traveling nomad, and spent last night in the back of my Bronco. The two concluded that he is a stalker. Carrie hit him with a potted plant.
The next day, he woke up realizing it's 2017. He went to the same engagement party, terrifying Avery and Carrie who still think he's a stalker. In his second attempt at traveling back to 2014, Noah listened to his friend Max's advice to project confidence but ended up adopting a brash, self-absorbed personality. While he successfully engaged with Avery romantically, their relationship became purely physical when he returned to the present. Avery and Ethan, on the other hand, are good friends. Noticing that Avery and Ethan still share a strong emotional connection, Noah had a candid conversation with Carrie. You're one of those guys girls sleep with sometimes, and as a result, we wind up hating ourselves. I have no control over any of this. I make a decision, and then I wake up three years later with the consequences. I'm just trying to be the type of guy that Avery would want to be with. The two went to a coffee shop and talked. I know emotions don't penetrate you, so you wouldn't understand how this feels. It's not like I've never had my heart broken before. Well, I have a hard time believing that, because every time we've talked, you've been pretty impenetrable. Let's just say I learned to move on. Yes. Something like that. Anyway, I mean, there has to be a way that I could prove I'm as good as Ethan is. Those two are just buds. Because I've been love blocking them since the second we met. They're like love magnets, and no matter what happens, they're gonna smash into each other over and over and over and over. Okay, I get it. You're extremely threatened by Ethan. He's stable, he's secure. As long as I've known Avery, she's been driven, but, yeah, she wants the home with the white picket fence, family. With that information, he traveled back in time in hopes of improving his chances. Noah secured a job at Max's company and presented himself as a more mature and responsible individual. Upon returning to 2017, Noah and Avery are living together in a spacious house and are about to throw an engagement party. However, Noah's pursuit of success came at a cost. His relationship with Max deteriorated as he stole the senior vice president position that Max had been striving for. His demanding job also left him with little time to spend with Avery and Carrie always needed to accompany her. Meanwhile, Ethan became distraught at the prospect of Avery marrying someone else. As Noah drove for him, Ethan, who was very drunk, confessed. I might have told Avery that I'm in love with her. I'm sorry. I, I just, ever since I met her, I've felt like, you know, it should have been Avery and me, and if I didn't tell her, she would never know. I'm sorry. What did she say when you told her? She said she wished things were different. When he came home, Noah had another heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Carrie. Hey, it's not you. You're a good guy. Sometimes relationships are about intangible things. Yep. You've said that before. I have? Kinda. Noah had an epiphany. He realized that Avery is truly meant to be with Ethan. Simultaneously, he acknowledged his deep connection with Carrie, which was forged during his time-traveling adventures.
On his fourth trip back to 2014, Noah orchestrated a meeting between Avery and Ethan at the Halloween party. As he pursued Carrie, he discovered that he shared more common interests with her, finding out that Avery's hobbies were Carrie's first and that it was Carrie who's behind Avery's Halloween costume, a character from his favorite movie, and Avery never even watched it. Noah's actions led to the restoration of Ethan and Avery's engagement, as well as the rekindling of his friendship with Max. However, he soon learned that despite his efforts, he hadn't won Carrie's heart, as she resumed her relationship with her ex-boyfriend. Things happen randomly for no reason at all. But they create opportunities, Noah. And you learn from those opportunities, even the missed ones. The question is, can you recognize that next opportunity when it matters the most? Max told him. Noah ran and tried to win Carrie back. Carrie, for the past three years, I've been pining over what I thought was destiny, but no matter what I would do, Ethan would end up connecting with Avery, and I would always seem to connect with you. Because this whole time, it was meant to be me and you. Wasn't it? Sadly, he failed to capture her heart. And then, Noah thought, to find happiness with Carrie, he needed to first forge a friendship with Avery, as their initial meeting had set the stage for everything that followed. In one last journey back in time, Noah revisited the moment he first met Avery, allowing their friendship to naturally develop. With the present now fully restored, Noah initiated a conversation with Carrie at the engagement party, and the two began building their own romantic relationship, finally on the path to happiness. When We First Met is a 2018 romantic comedy that stands out thanks to its charismatic cast. Adam Devine, known for his comedic talents in projects like Workaholics and Pitch Perfect, brings his signature charm to the character of Noah. His portrayal of a lovable but initially clueless friend who's stuck in the dreaded friend zone adds depth and relatability to the film. Alexandra Daddario, who plays Avery, compliments Devine's performance, creating an engaging on-screen chemistry. Shelley Hennig as Carrie adds a refreshing dynamic to the story, offering a contrasting character to Avery and highlighting the central theme of personal growth. The film's premise, centered around time travel through a magical photo booth, is both quirky and engaging. This unique twist adds depth to what might otherwise be a straightforward romantic comedy. It sets up an intriguing opportunity for the audience to explore different timelines and potential outcomes in Noah and Avery's relationship, adding an element of curiosity and unpredictability to the story. One of the movie's strengths lies in its ability to transition from light-hearted comedy to more emotionally resonant territory. As the plot progresses, it delves into the themes of personal growth and self-discovery, offering genuine moments of reflection and introspection. Noah's character arc is particularly well executed, as he transforms from a bumbling, love-struck friend into a more self-assured and well-rounded individual. These moments of character development are handled with depth and authenticity, resonating with the audience on a deeper level. However, when we first met does have its shortcomings. It occasionally follows some predictable romantic comedy tropes, which might make certain plot developments easy to anticipate for viewers well-versed in the genre. Additionally, while Noah's character undergoes significant growth and development, Avery's character could have been explored in more depth. Her feelings and motivations are somewhat underdeveloped, and her character arc feels somewhat secondary to Noah's, which leaves potential for a more well-rounded exploration of her perspective. Another minor criticism is the film's occasional struggle to balance its comedic and introspective tones. 
Some abrupt shifts in mood from humor to more serious introspection could be disorienting for some viewers, potentially affecting the film's overall flow. In conclusion, When We First Met offers a unique twist on the romantic comedy genre with its time-traveling premise. It boasts a charming cast and provides moments of both laughter and heartfelt emotion, making it an enjoyable choice for those seeking a feel-good romantic comedy with a touch of whimsy. While it may follow some familiar tropes and could benefit from more nuanced character development, its blend of humor, romance, and personal growth creates an entertaining and engaging viewing experience. Thank you for watching our movie synopsis. Be sure to click the subscribe, like, and notification bell to receive reminders of our next movie synopsis here on Bento's Storybox. See you next time, or at the movies.